Hi everyone, this is Prashad Parthiban. Today I am going to take a training on Predictive Analytics. So what is Predictive Analytics? We are going to predict the future outcome based on the current data. So let's take an example. If you go to YouTube, if you start listening to a particular segment of videos like you know, a melody songs, within few seconds you might see videos that you like, few more melody songs in your you know, list of YouTube videos. How is that possible? Companies like YouTube, they look at the data and they take the data, they do analysis and then recommends uh, similar videos to you, right? So same thing in predictive analytics, right? So you look at uh, different data sources, analyze those data, and then try to predict the future, okay? If this customer is behaving with the so-and-so pattern, with so-and-so data, then we can 80% or 90% say that even in the future, this customer is going to behave the same way, right? So that's the benefit of predictive analysis. That's the reason why so many companies are investing millions and millions of money because they do not want just like that an underwriter, especially in property and casualty world or no adjuster, look at the data and confirm if the data is complex or medium. They wanted the system to do that. There are many reasons for this. One, they do not want no experienced underwriters or no experienced adjusters to look at every climb right because they are also paid in dollars they have to be paid in no dollars and then they do not want to utilize that time reviewing each and every climb each and every policy and coming up with a rating so they do not they want a system to help them that's where this predictive analytics plays a major role even in property and casualty world so let's take an example if you see this picture, every time when you kind of create a new submission, say if you take a personal auto example, with your car or the driver, all that we do is, we try to feed that data, policy data, into this predictive modeling system. In turn, what this predictive modeling system does is, it goes to multiple sources of data. This is a sample, again, this is a very generic sample and it can go to at least 100 plus applications with so many variables and then pull the data once they have the data they will analyze the data once they analyze the data they will come up with some kind of scores saying that this customer will have a score of 20 which means this underwriters will know that this customer is a very favorable customer hence they will give less premium if I have a customer who is having a score of 70 or 80 based on this you know, calculation, then the underwriters can decide this particular customer is not a favorable customer. <coughs> now, let's take an example, right? Billing data. Say I have a customer who is coming to an insurance company to get a policy. We are creating a new submission. Now, as per the predictive analytics, step one, we are going to pull the data for that particular customer. Billing data is my first uh, no application, right? If that customer add too many number of cancellations for non-payment, which tells you that this, com this customer is not going to make a payment on time, so that you can charge him more premium compared to a customer who have not even cancelled a policy at least once. It goes on like that, right? So score, climbs data, like if this customer haven't have any climbs, in the past, then you can give less premium. If this customer have more claims, more premium. Policy data, ISO data, building data, like how kind of, what kind of, you no know, characteristics, what kind of, you no know, safety precautions this particular customer is going to have. So, long story short, all that we are trying to say is the predictive analytics is a way where we try to utilize the data that we have and then come up with the better algorithms which will tell you if the customer is a favorable customer or not a favorable customer or within the medium range. So once you send the policy data, okay, this is the policy side of uh, thing, right? Coming to client side, assume I have a customer who is creating 
a new climb. Now, when they create a new climb, we do not want the adjusters experience when for those who are new to adjuster they are the one who reviews the climb determines the this is the maximum amount that we can make for this particular climb we cannot have experienced adjusters look at all the climbs then we are going to spend money more on adjusters salary right so we do not instead what we are trying to do is take the climb review the climb based on the different data sources same thing that we did for policy and then come up with the score so between 1 to 100 if the score is 20 which means this climb is a simple climb and can be processed automatically if the climb is having a score of 80 that means an adjuster has to look at it it's the same concept like you know policy just that in policy we will have to use this <coughs> score for determining the premium Whereas in climbs, we need to use this score for determining if this particular climb has to be automatically processed or dedicated or we need someone to look at the climb. This is one example. In climb center, we do have multiple use cases where we can use the score. So that's a long story. In short, predictive analytics is very much used where we have to predict the future based on the current data. This is what the practical law use of predictive analytics now let's go to how it is done very short uh, you know, overview we have something like factor and algorithms let's take an example right so if you take already we have looked at the billing data right so medical data right so if I have a customer who had some kind of medical bodily injury right say if that customer had a bodily injury for five times in the last five years then what we do is we give them the factor like a factor of one if this customer had 10 times then factor of two so all that we do is we assign the factor and then we have an algorithm which will have its own logic that we define which will run and then come up with this score so to those who ask how it is performed how the predictive analytics is going to work behind the scenes high level you know, input is we use the factor to give it to each and every variable and also for each and every scenario. So if I have a scenario where I say if this number of you know, medical climbs is between 1 to 10, 5, give this factor of 0 0.05. If it's between 5 to 10, give this factor of 0 0.010. So then use this factor multiply by the required you know, algorithm which will give you the finalized score. So pretty much this is what I was planning to cover I know this is a very interesting topic at the same time it's a bit complex too one more additional information before I wind up so we have multiple sources of data right like you now we have 100 plus data 100 plus data sources where we pull the data variables what insurance companies does is they do not rely on one algorithm instead they do have multiple algorithms like say example if they have algorithm number one with model one they use data variables from billing what they could have a model two which will use algorithms from entity data climbs data into data the reason why they're trying to do is maybe when they try to start the project they might have thought that relying on this data billing data or medical data may be more favorable to them but as time grows, they might have felt based on the data that instead of billing data, if I would have used this commercial cross score or entity data, that would have been more favorable. Then they do not need to do code changes again. That's the reason why they have three to four models. And then at a time, we can have only one model, which will be there in production. But other three models will be a kind of, no, we call it as champion versus challenger model like you no know, champion is the one which will be there in the production which will be used to come derive the score meanwhile behind the scenes this challenger models will be keep on scoring based on the different attributes at one point in time if this business when i say business actuarials actuarials are nothing but the who, team who does this reporting or you no know, this who does this scoring process if they think that this scoring for challenger is more productive than the champion they can always use this challenger as the champion and then move this champion to challenger that's more detailed but i just wanted to give that inputs to you also i hope you like my training videos if you like my training videos 
please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a great day.